Hi, my name is Jim Moyle, and welcome to episode five of our Azure Image Builder series. Um, you can find all of the code uh, for this entire series uh, on my GitHub account. Um, it's, uh, it's fairly easy to find. It's linked below in the description. If you want to get in touch with me, then you can find me on Twitter as well. So why are we looking at lockdown scenarios? Well, for the large enterprise, quite often there's a lot of constraints around what you can and cannot do in terms of building an image. Either it's only private endpoints or the majority private endpoints and only a little bit downloaded from, uh, from trusted uh, internet resources. Certainly no unpredictable software versions. Everything has to be the version that's tested, the version that's verified, and that needs to be consistent across all image builds. The same goes for patches as well. Um, everything needs to be tested and verified. Quite often, there'll be no anonymous access um, to internal shares or databases or resources allowed. Everything needs to be authenticated. Everything needs to be auditable. This one I can't fix with Azure Image Builder, which is no untagged Azure objects at creation time. Quite often, um, enterprises will require everything to be tagged so it can be correctly attributed to the right part of the business. And if you need that one, right now you'll need to use Packer rather than Azure Image Builder. Now, as long as you fulfill these requirements, if it gets a bit complicated or uh, otherwise, then that's okay. You can um, use any amount of contrivance to do this as long as you're fulfilling the requirements. So how are we gonna start doing this? Well, we're going to, let's talk about managed identity for, uh, for VMs. In Azure, you can assign a an identity to a VM and then give that identity permissions. And what we need to do is that staging VM that Azure Image Builder creates, we need to give that the identity. So Azure Image Builder needs to deploy that staging VM now, somehow we want Azure to notice that VM has been created by AIB and give it a managed identity. That's how we can make it authenticate to those private endpoints, those its internal authenticated resources. We need to then give that VM managed identity access to those resources. How do we do that? Well, we can use Event Grid. Now, there's various ways you can publish events. Now for this particular way, because we don't have a predictable resource group that we can subscribe to, we'll need to get the system topic for the whole subscription so that when AIB publishes or deploys the VM, then we'll have an event created for that uh, VM deployment. We'll then filter out all of the VM creations that are happening possibly thousands in our subscription, so that we're zeroing in on the correct VM. Then that will create a JSON object, which we can then forward on to a webhook. And in this case, we're gonna start an automation runbook. You don't need a runbook, you could do it with um, a function or, or lots of other ways you can automate, but in this particular example, we're gonna use a, a runbook. That runbook, it's going to give the VM a managed identity. Now, previous to that, you will, of course, have to create an automation account and a run as account for that run book in order for all this to work. So we're deploying from this template. And let's have a look at uh, this deployment, which is currently in progress. So we haven't quite created the, um, the staging group, so I'll fast forward it so we can see there. So this is the staging group just being staging resource group, just being created. And we can look and see that um, this VM is sitting in this VNet. And what we see is we've got a lot of private endpoints there that we need to connect to from the staging VM. So this here is the um, event grid system topic that we talked about before. Now this will be a record of all the events in your subscription. Now we don't want all the events, we just want the event that's gonna give us um, the correct start to our um, runbook. So we need to create a filter which 
takes that JSON object that um, the system topic is going to produce. And with these, we've got three filters, compute, uh, it's a virtual machine write, so creation, and that third bit there was we filtered it on the identity that Azure Image Builder has got. And that then will forward that JSON payload once it's been filtered out to the webhook endpoint we see there. Now, in this screen, we can see that we have delivered, sorry, we, we've received 30 events, we've filtered out one event, and we've delivered one event to that uh, webhook endpoint. Now let's have a look at our, at our run book. And we see it's run three times, and let's have a look at the most recent run. Now, on the right, we see the JSON payload. You can have a look at that um, if you want. That's how I figured out what I should filter on. And we've got your errors, your warnings, etc., in there as well. So now let's have a look at the staging VM that's been created. Now, this is in a private VNet, so there's no uh, external access for that. And now we've got a system assigned identity. We've done that via the runbook. Now we've got the system assigned identity. We can use either, we can download the, um, the Azure PowerShell from Microsoft. That's one example, or you can download it from, uh, from blog, uh, from blob storage. And we can get into the, um, use the managed identity that way to connect and authenticate to the blob storage. Or what you can use is you can use REST here, so you don't need the, uh, the Azure PowerShell module, and you can get the token, and here we're connecting with read access to a key vault. Now, once we've got read access to a key vault, proper auth properly authenticated via the managed identity, we can do whatever we like. In this case, I'm mapping a couple of drives, and the reason why this is a good example is because these are mapped to um, the language ISOs. You can see that instead of copying all the ISOs down from wherever we can find them, we've just got these mounted and authenticated to that share. And we can see that instead of downloading 13 gigs of ISOs, we can actually look into a map drive, which is a far easier way to, uh, to get at your language packs, etc., from within your staging VM. So, that means that we have now everything we need to connect to private endpoints within your staging VM. So let's go through that in a slightly more detail in this flowchart. So we start the deployment of a new version of the image. As your image builder connects to an existing VNet, um, it uses a proxy VM, which we did see briefly in the, uh, in the demo there to mean that you're not connecting over any public IP address to, uh, to Azure Image Builder. It could then create a staging VM without a public IP address. Event Grid publishes the event, and then we filter that out, and then we forward that information to the webhook. The webhook then starts the runbook, and we've got a bit of PowerShell in the runbook, um, which both gives the VM a managed identity, and puts that managed identity in the role group. We're using machine-created identity over user-created identity because then that identity only lives for as long as the VM lives, a uh, more secure way of doing things. That group then both gives access to blob storage where you can say download the AZ module and uh, stop whatever scripts you like. The AZ module will help you out with, uh, without doing REST calls to get your token. Um, you can then install your applications. At the same time, we gave access to a key vault. Do whatever you like after that because you can get API keys, passwords, whatever you need. Um, in this case, we're getting the token and that token gives us access to the file storage and then we can map drives to those file storage. And then we can install our languages. And that means that you can then take private information, now that could be configuration files for a security platform that you're using. It could be anything that you don't want to just download from the internet. Now, it, 
you could do absolutely everything private, you know, installation files, keeping those um, applications installation at the very version you want. Or you could say, I want a combination of these two. You can actually say, well, maybe I want to download the AZ PowerShell module from the internet, but I want to get other stuff from private endpoints. And you can do a combination of what we've talked about in the previous episodes along with this. Um, it does use quite a few Azure services, um, as you can see. But that's the power of the cloud, right? You can combine all of these things, and we've used the Manage Identity and uh, Event Grid and uh, Automation Runbook to do this. But once you've got it set up, then that's it. You can fire and forget because it, it will trigger every time you deploy a staging VM and will give access to those resources. Of course, on top of this, we could add CICD as a, uh, as a controller and, um, and perhaps I'll do another episode looking at that in the future. Um, Azure DevOps or GitHub Actions would be, uh, would be great for this. Um, if you enjoyed uh, this short episode, uh, hit like, and if you want to see more, hit subscribe. Again, I've not gone through the code in this episode, um, but it is there if you want to set up everything on my GitHub. Thank you.